preparing to go live? Right. Now it's time to start being PC on. Yeah, like, oh, we're recording. <laughs> Last time we did this when we started, Jeff didn't know that we were recording. And Jeff, it's, it's funny, you should go back in some of the webinars with Auto Lead Start. Jeff was talking about his, uh, his first kiss. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll send you it after me. It's really funny listening to the first couple of minutes. And Jeff is like, oh, we're recording? Oh. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, there's probably a lot of incriminating recordings out there for Jeff. I'm sure there are. I have no doubt. Whatever. <laughs> Most of the time we're talking about alcohol when uh, <laughs> the recording starts because it's Friday. <laughs> True. There was one of those too last time I was on dealer refresh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Usually when we go live, that's a good one to start with as well. Usually we're not the only ones thinking about it. Yeah, I'm not surprised <laughs> by that either. <laughs> so there's a few extra comments. Yep. All right. Well, if this gets boring, we can always go to that. No problem. <laughs> yeah. I think you'll be all right. <laughs> yeah. Everyone, everyone's down for the whiskey or the vodka discussion. That is true. But it's summertime, so maybe we should talk about tequilas, especially or, where you're at. Or rosé. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't hang with that conversation. I have to get my wife for that part. Yeah. Jessica. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah, it's like we're up. Right. We are. Yeah. Giving everyone a snooze fest right now. Yeah. <laughs> Still gotta wake up. <laughs> wow. Well, Yolanda, it's been a while since we've had you on Deal the Fresh, Refresh Friday. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here again. <laughs> well, let's get started. So yeah. Marketing automation. That's the uh, that's the topic. Yeah. Why? Why? Well, first off, give us a little bit of background on you yourself and all that good stuff. But uh, you are the marketing director with Auto Lead Star. You've been with them for quite some time now, right? Yeah, four year, a little over four years. That is wow. And yeah. and you're in sunny Miami, right? Sunny Miami, we have actually headquarters in Jerusalem, in Israel, and in Miami. So we're, I'm right now in Miami. It looks sunny, but it's actually really not sunny today. <laughs> how, 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 how long of, of a flight is that? Miami to, Jerusalem, to Israel is long. It's like 14 hours. Oh. New York to Israel is a little closer. It's like 11 and a half. But not much. <laughs> not much. That's a hike. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. um, you were saying before the show started that you were getting ready to head back to Israel. Yeah, so I actually started in our Jerusalem office and was there for two years and then relocated to Miami so that we can open up U.S. operations because we were getting big and we needed to prepare for scaling, which was obviously very exciting. Um, at this point, within the next year, I think we will be all set in, in the States, so I'll be able to head back to Israel and work from there. Well, congratulations. Thank you, yeah. And now you're excited to get back, aren't you? Yeah. You I hate I Miami. I am. I have to say I like Miami more than I thought I would, so it's bittersweet. But, yes, I am excited to go to go back. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, and we got involved with Dealer Refresh, I think, years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Years ago. Um, it was a really good way for us to understand the industry since we came from outside of automotive. Auto Lead Star used to be an e-commerce technology platform. It actually still is, but we shifted to automotive to really focus on some of the pain points that we've seen come from, from automotive and specifically holes that we see with car dealers. And Dealer Refresh was one of the first ways we were able to connect with the community and understand what we can bring, how we can use it to understand better what car dealers need, what the automotive industry needs to just move forward. What made you guys get into the automotive sector? 
Um, it's, it's a bit of a, a couple of different reasons and a longer story, but we definitely needed a vertical to get into because when you're in e-commerce and selling to everyone, it's, it's a little bit harder and realized that our technology was probably the best fit with what was missing in this specific industry. We did have some investors that were involved in automotive and, and they gave us some background, which was, was, which was helpful insight, but definitely having an industry that is a little bit behind in automation and technology, not in a bad way, just a little bit behind. We were, we felt like we were probably the right fit for bringing in um, something that would be able to really help fill some holes. So when you say behind, like I mean, how far behind versus other industries do you think, do you think we are? Uh, I would say years behind e-commerce for sure. I mean, it's different, right? You can't even, you can't really compare. And I'm, th this isn't even something that we plan on talking about, but it's not like digital retailing is going to be the same. Buying shoes is not the same thing as buying a car online. It's just not, and yeah. we get that. Um, but there's simple, there's simple principles that, that should be applied to automotive that are already been applied to other industries like data consolidation, owning your own da data, marketing automation, like all of that is, is just crucial for building out your business today. What are, what, what are the different services that you guys offer at Auto Lead Star? Um, so Auto Lead Star right now, we're actually, because we've gotten to the point of kind of bringing it full circle and having a, a, a real platform, we're building out a marketing automation platform for dealers. So that includes everything from a way to connect to your visitors. So whether your visitors are coming to the site and engaging and clicking and, and um, coming back a second time, we want to be able to give dealers a way to connect with those, with those visitors and turn, turn them into leads. Um, we also have a marketing automation platform that automates SEM strategy that's fairly new. Um, and that's so that we can help dealers acquire the best traffic so that they can then connect with that traffic and turn them into leads. And we also have a data platform for dealers to be able to explore and diagnose all sorts of problems that they might see or things that are working, but giving them the full funnel visibility that they need to understand ROI marketing, what's working, what's not, um, which really you can only do if you consolidate your data. Yeah. Well, it sounds like uh, really the, all those services sort of marry together, don't they? Yeah. Yes. That's definitely what we're, what we're hoping to achieve. It's something so, I'm not sure many Americans know, but Israel is like the leading tech country on the planet when it comes to data analysis. And it is true. It is true. Israelis in, invented a lot of what Americans use today, including Waze, for example, <laughs> was, uh, it's an Israeli technology. So lots of good technology there. That's actually why our headquarters will always stay there because we have the best data engineers that you can find over there. That's yeah. interesting. I wasn't aware Silicon of Silicon Valley. Well, yeah. So with marketing automation, I mean, you say dealerships are a little bit behind or the industry is, um, you know, it's, that's hard to argue, uh, but, there is, I mean, it's definitely already some automation. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess depending upon how you want to define automation, uh, remarketing, um, you know, maybe some email uh, campaigns uh, typically can be automated. Um, some simple things, but whenever you're speaking about automation, want, maybe you can elaborate a little bit more uh, on what all you're talking about whenever you are saying automation and what, I mean, what's the benefits for a dealership to really the title of, of today's theme was around automation, but bringing your marketing more in house, uh, which, you know, there's probably some agencies out there cringing, but that's fine. Uh, what would be the real benefits for a dealership to bring the marketing in house with some type of automated product? Well, okay, loaded question. I'm going to start with the first part. <laughs> you know, great question, loaded question. The first part is um, really just about what kind of automation is, is missing and what, what we kind of have now. I would say that a lot of the automation in aut automotive right now is very uh, heavily rule-based. So, for example, templates in the CRM, if something happens with a client, 
a customer comes in, buys a car, ship off that email that yes, is automated. Someone converts on the site, there's follow-up that gets automated, which is great, meaning that is part of automation, but there's a whole nother layer to it that I think will really help the automotive industry keep up with the way that people shop, people shop today, which mm -hmm. is really taking into account all the different data streams and using different algorithms to actually in real time decide what the best way to in engage that visitor or send to that customer as follow-up is. So it's not based on, oh, they just bought a car, they get this email. It might be based on they haven't been to our site in six months and they are up for a new lease and they're a long-term client. What should we do with this person based on these you know, data points? So I think we do have some automation in, in automotive. I would say I, I probably think it can be a lot better and it can be based on real machine learning, like real machine learning. So having a machine actually learn different things and then decide with predictive analytics in real time what should be shown. So that's, that's the first part. Um, and then the second part is obviously bringing it in-house. A lot of this is software-based. A lot of it is something that you can build in-house with even just one person, um, which also really helps with um, having access to your metrics and your data and trusting that everything's up, updated, right? So another mm -hmm. thing about automation is that if you have to update things manually, like your monthly incentives, or if a car is sold and you have to manually take down that ad for that specific vehicle, then you're only autom automating so much, right? You wanna be able to have that all automated so that you can focus on real strategy and growth, which you can do if it's in-house, you really can. Hmm. So how would one person begin to take these reins and start doing it his or herself? Well, that's a, that's a good question. I would say definitely looking at tools and softwares. Obviously, Auto Lead Star is not the only one. That's a given. There's so many, so many things out there. But being able to manage everything in-house, and Alex, you spoke a little bit about this yesterday with knowledge, transfer knowledge too, right? So you want to make sure when things are in-house that you're actually being able to have like a, almost like a data warehouse where you don't have to rely on a person to, to transfer knowledge. So once you bring that all in, uh, make sure it's all in one platform, that's definitely one step forward. Um, we talked about uh, built with, which was an interesting way of just thinking about keeping control of what's happening with your site, but get rid of everything that's irrelevant. So old code, snip, old, old code snippets, um, vendors that you're you might still be paying that aren't active whatever that might be which i'm sure happens all the time um or vendors that you're not paying that are active yeah was, that that's happens. that's typically how it is vendors that you yeah. cancel you're no longer paying but uh somehow all their codes still hanging around on your website well and you might yeah. have you might have stumbled into a new phrase there you said cold code snippets i guess we should call them yeah oh, I, I didn't say old <laughs> I meant to say old, cold, old, cold <laughs> snippets. Yeah, wow. We should say cold. They are cold. Yeah. We were, we, like you were talking yesterday, and we've, we've covered this many times on, on different shows before of, of dealers that have like lost track of what code is still on their website from vendors they canceled years ago. Yeah. Um, and, and you were looking at one that had three different chat tools still phoning home. That's when you know that something's wrong, right? There were three different chat code snippets on a dealership site that we were dissecting yesterday. Um, and that, I mean, not all of those code snippets are necessarily optimized also for site load speed time and things like that. So forget about having foreign code on your site, but it could also be affecting load time. Um, but all of that stuff is a lot harder to do when you're not doing stuff in-house because you don't have one central place that you're able to control all of it. So you have to make sure that the person who actually put the code snippet on at, you know, with the agency or the website provider still works there. It's recorded. They know what they're talking about. You have a POC. Um, it's a very outdated way, I think, of, of working. So obviously not everything can be bring in, brought in-house, and that's not necessarily the, uh, the, the claim I'm trying to make here. But definitely having a control center and owning your data and doing what you can in-house can definitely help dealerships with, with uh, a better marketing strategy. 
So maybe having a list of like, here's a service. This is a, a paid per click service that you know, we, we do buy. Here's a, uh, a display and remarketing service that we do buy. And, and just having a spreadsheet to start with, like this is our CRM system. This is, <laughs> this is yeah, it, it, it sounds silly, but uh, you know, you think of all the turnover that happens in the stores and knowledge does not get passed between people, especially if somebody has been promoted to full customer, AKA fired. Um, so. Um, I was actually, I went to a dealership a couple weeks ago to train them on how to read some of our, our leads. It was a BDC training. And one of the, one of the employees was there for three weeks and didn't have a CRM login yet. So <laughs> that was interesting for me to see. It was like, there's no, I mean, this is a whole nother topic about BDC training and I'm, I'm not well versed in that at all. Um, I, I've never worked in a dealership. I don't, I can't really speak to that in terms of experience, but I was shocked that you have some, a BDC person who was not able to log into their CRM three weeks into the job. That was a bit shocking. I wonder what they were doing. I they're getting trained. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> to get coffee. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there, there's so many gaps, but I think have, have, again, having that one central place, that person, that spreadsheet, whatever it is. I also think um, understanding what you're, what, what you should be tracking. So whether you are or not bringing someone in house, there is something to be said about understanding your metrics even if you don't own the data. And I think specifically with SEM, that's, that can probably be up, updated, right? It's not about, and this is just one example of how bringing things in house can help you just maximize budget and optimize. But with SEM, you wanna make sure that you're actually getting quality clicks and you're not just getting you know, a vendor telling you, wow, we got you thousands of clicks this month mm -hmm. because then you're just spending money on on potentially wasteful clicks, maybe good clicks, which is, which is great. Um, but there's a certain understanding of what your metrics are, should be, that is also a huge benefit of bringing some kind of control center in-house. The spreadsheet grows. So here's our systems we use, here's what they do, and then here are KPIs or the, our, our most important stat to track per thing. Yeah, and, and use, use a software that does it for you, right? Like use a software that just gives you the right metrics and it's completely transparent and, and reflects your data. Um, I don't even think it's, it sounds like a lot of work when we talk about the spreadsheet growing, but it, it's just about being able to use platforms that will help you track what you should be tracking. Well, I, I refer to a spreadsheet mostly because you got to start somewhere. And yeah. pretty much everyone has access to Excel uh, or Google Docs or whatever it is. Yeah. And, uh, and then, yes, and then you can layer on uh, software that does take data feeds from other technologies yes. to automate this a bit, to your point. Uh, and, yeah. Yeah, and, and on that note, I think it is actually really important to make sure that they are interconnected. So you have your CRM, in most cases, the CRM is completely separate from the website data, right? So it's not like you can see when someone comes to the site and might be a, a current customer versus a prospect. Um, once you can connect that, you have a whole nother, a whole nother layer of control of your marketing that will bring you, I think, way more quality leads and uh, sales and clicks and people walking into the dealership just because your communication with the shopper is so much more on point. So you speak with a lot of dealerships, <clears throat> sorry, and as you're out, how many of those dealerships are bringing, let's just say their paid search in house? Are they owning that data uh, or are they just hiring an agency? The agency sets it all up, uh, basically using their analytics versus your own Google analytics. And they're just going by what the, what their agency is saying. So I would say 80% are using agencies. I mean, that's, I made up that number. I don't quote me on that number, but it's, it's most of the people are using agencies, which, which again is not, it's not a bad thing. It's just, if you do, if you, if you are using agency, make sure that you're holding them accountable make sure that you're aware of 
what what the billing is, right? How, how, how can you hold them accountable if you don't have direct access to it? I, I'm not sure, right? Pick agencies that will give you access. I mean, there are so many, there are agencies that will have you own your own Google mm -hmm. account. Um, I think that's a really good medium or at least a step towards the right direction because you at the end of the day do own your account. Um, I think what's, what's a hard thing to understand, and this is very common also outside of automotive, is the percentage fees, right? So we, again, also spoke about this a little bit, but the if a campaign's working really well, you want to be incentivized to actually put more money into a campaign and, and run with it. But then again, you're going to pay more agency fees because it's reflected in percentage. Um, and also, if you don't have access to that, are they, is it really performing? Is it just clicks? Is your, it's not always necessarily a good thing that your CPC is down, right? Maybe you want high CPC and high leads. Cost. So really, I mean, dealerships should not be paying a percentage of their spend. It should just be a flat fee. And they should have access to their own, to their own accounts. Yes. You know, otherwise, you just don't get the transparency. I mean, we've got a discussion right now happening on over in the dealer forums uh, someone had posted something about the fact that, you know, their analytics are off. They're not really being able to see what they need to see. Um, you know, they, they hired an agency, I believe to do their paid search. Uh, all of a sudden there's this nice traffic increase, but come to find out it was all bots and they didn't set the, anal I, I don't know if they set the analytics up on purpose this way, or if it was just a mistake, you could probably make it an educated guess on that. Uh, so, you know, they were able to, in, uh, I guess, inflate the numbers for, for the traffic, but most of it was just bots and the way they set up the analytics, they weren't able to track what it was or what it wasn't. And the fact that they didn't have direct access into it, there was really no way of telling. Yeah, I, I think that happens a, a, a lot. lot. I know. Sometimes they'll even set up campaigns and the campaigns go to broken links. Um, so that's can awesome. A, can a dealership, let's just, again, we'll, we'll, we'll stick to the SEM strategy. Can a dealership really bring that in house with software? So that's what I was going to say. I, I was going to say that I completely understand why dealers fall on the agency or vendor path, right? They don't have the time. They don't have the training. They don't have the staff. Um, I think, and that's, and that's exactly goes back to how we started this conversation, which is where every other industry is at now, which is that there should be software that allows them to do this in-house, right? There should be software that does basically everything for them, automates everything, including the, um, the keyword strategy, whether that's, you know, short tail, long tail, competitive analysis, bringing that all into this. It should all be automated up to date based on real website uh, inventory and incentives and specials and branding and trade-in and whatever else. Um, and once you have that automation system that also gives you access, not just to your platform, but your analytics and your metrics, you should be able to, to rely on a path that's not agent, that's not outsourced, right? I don't want to say agency because it could be anything. Um, and that's, and that's not just what auto lead star is trying to do. I'm sure, I'm sure others as well really give dealerships, the power again to be able to bring that in-house and do that with a sophisticated automated software platform. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that actually is a really nice way to tie it back into how we started because that is a perfect example of something that exists outside of, autom of, of automotive, but really you need something that's automotive focused so that it stays within OEM compliance and um, is inventory focused, meaning that automotive is special in the sense that there are certain things that need to happen in automotive. Yeah. Why do you think dealerships are uh, skeptical to do this, to make this move? What I don't are you know. Out there? First, I would know. love to ask anyone who's live here and, uh, and participating, <laughs> but if you read my, uh, if you read my latest, I don't know if it was published actually the dealer refresh article. Yeah. So I wrote a little bit about, about what my experience has been speaking to dealers about it because everything is like, Oh, it's okay. And this has been working for us for a really long time. Mm -hmm. So it, you know, it's bringing us okay results. I think it is a very scary thing to change from something that you've been doing for years 
to an automated system. I think it's very hard to trust an automated system. I, I get that, but on the other hand, when you look at the actual data, it's so clear that a machine can do things better than a human, right? I mean, a machine- Such as that. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, you know, I took the, uh, the machine challenge years ago, uh, back in my checkered flag days, I went up against the dealer.com machine and, um, did two months of me, uh, personally handling our, our paid search campaigns and then against two months of them, uh, doing it through what was called total control dominator then. Um, and it dominated me. <laughs> I well, got my butt kicked. I'm sh even if you're great at what you're doing, you don't even have the time to necessarily update everything the way that a machine has can just update in real time. I mean, and, right. And it's working 24 right. seven, you know, trying to go in and, you know, it'll pick up those, those shoppers that might be looking at two in the morning when right. you're hopefully sleeping. Um, so yeah, you know, there's, there's a lot of benefit there. Now, the the question does become like when we say agency or or bringing things in house. I have I have a little. I'm not totally clear on what either of those terms mean. Um, so when I say when I hear agency around marketing, I think of another company handling my marketing for me, which could be like a dealer.com or a dealer inspire or um, you know, uh, God rest their soul, CDK marketing. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, and then, uh, when you say in house, is that using the software yourself to tune things? Um, so that maybe you're saying, I want to spend more money on Camry's than Corolla's this month or something like that. Yeah. Because I, I was on the phone earlier with Eric over at dealer teamwork and we were discussing a few things and I know they, he's a big proponent of, of, uh, uh, marketing automation and they've built their own programs and such to be able to do paid search and uh, you know helps they've been able to automate quite a bit of it uh, but you still go through them it's not like you actually bring that software into the dealership install it on a computer and and take it from there so when I say software I mean you know give dealers a login and give them the ability to manage with support of dealer teamwork or whatever whatever platform you're using mm -hmm. um, but definitely having the ability to manage it in-house if they want should be part of any any automated platform so i'm at auto lead star i use an automation platform called autopilot it's an email platform that i go into and i set up all these different things and i make sure it's integrated with my crm and yes, I own it and I'm on it and I use it, but there's a whole support system there that, you know, I have a dedicated account manager and anytime I have a question or if I need to build something, I have that support, which is kind of like, that's, that's real SaaS, right? That's software as a service. I use the software, the software as my service. I also have account services. So I think that's kind of the best blend because in a way you're still using a vendor, like you are, you, you, you don't have to rely on everything. But, um, but you still have the control and you own the data, which is a very crucial part of it. I'm not familiar with dealer teamwork's um, solution and I, I'm making an assumption here that the dealer would own the data. I'm not, I don't know how it works, but as long as the dealer owns the data, I think that's, that's a huge, huge component of it. So what does it mean to own the data? Yeah, why is that so important? So, I think, well, I think anyone anywhere should, I personally, as a company, businesses, everyone should own their own data, meaning they have whatever, whatever they're using is through their login and their, um, they have control of the actual server and the system so that they can access. So if they cancel that provider, they can bring over. Exactly. Another, and that way, you know, you leave a service, everything you've worked so hard for you know, optimizing, you're not losing out on. You can bring it, it, even if you're going to hire another third party or vendor to come in and help manage, that's fine, but they're still going to use that, that, that software that you've been using. Yeah, of course. And that, Good I mean, and that's, the, and that's the dealership's data, right? So a dealership's, you know, everything the dealership works to build their name or build their, uh, build campaigns against competitors. I mean, that, that shouldn't go away when they change anything. Yeah. 
I mean, same thing with, with CRMs or um, any kind of plugin that you put on your website. Everything has to be owned by the dealer. Hmm. Sounds like fun. <laughs> well, and then also you can do things like consolidating your data and hooking data systems together and being able to target based on that. I mean, there's really amazing things you can do once all of your data is connected, right? So well, what are some of those things? What are some of uh, the more effective tactics used to optimize marketing automation? Um, I would say one of the biggest ones is list build. I mean, it's the simplest one is list building, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're going to build lists and export lists based off of your CRM and then upload them to your retargeting list, I mean, it's a lot of manual work and it doesn't always take all of the data points into, into account if they're not actually integrated versus being able to automate that, right? Create a list, tell the machine and the machine will learn. Anyone who comes to my site more than three times or anyone who seems like they would be in uh, a low funnel shopper who, I don't know, is a current client in my CRM and is opened up three emails in the past three months, whatever it is, you can mm -hmm. create those kind of funnels and then auto people just get funneled into that list. There's no need to build a list off of that after you create the, the, the kind of the criteria. So with machine learning, you do obviously have to tell the machine what to learn. There is some thought, meaning you do need a human there, but and you can adjust that based on whether or not the strategy is working for you. But at the end of the day, you want a machine to be able to automate whatever you're teaching it to automate. So being able to have some more personalized dynamic content based on that customer's actions. Yeah. And being able to pull in from different places, right? So again, going back to the owning your own data and consolidating it, being able to actually tell a machine to build lists based off of multiple places, not just, your website or not what would just be an example of some personalized dynamic content based on that, that data. Wow. There's so much. Um, it depends if they're an anonymous or not. Right. So let's mm -hmm. say you're building some kind of list, but the person actually hasn't converted. So there's only so much you can do with an anonymous person on the list, but definitely retarget. Right. So someone comes to your site, looks at the Ford F-150, make sure that they see not just an ad about the Ford F-150, but, the same exact picture retargeted to them the next day. Um, if they are someone that you have in your CRM and they do go to your website and based off of their website behavior, you might want to send them an email. They went to see, an, they went to a VDP for F-150. Next day, they should get an incentive on that very car because you know who they are and that's the type of behavior that you want to be, you know, bringing to your deal. That's the type of customers that you want to be bringing to your dealership based on what you're showing them. Alex, is there anyone out there doing anything like this right now? I know there's some things in the works. No. I'm not sure they're ready to be uh, talked about yet. Is Auto Lead Star, are you guys, I mean, because you guys don't build dealership websites, you, you almost need, I mean, do you need the dealership website provider to, to be able to change up and be able to, uh, uh, present that personalized content? Um, no, you do not need to be the website provider. I, I'm not super technical, but I think just with basic Java code, JavaScript code snippets, you can take over whatever you want on a website these days. Take uh, yeah, take, <laughs> take over. But a lot of it's actually off the website too, which is interesting. Like a lot of it, the website piece is only part of it. There's a lot of lead nurture involved that, that makes it interesting. So the following up via email, if someone looks at a VDP or the retargeting, being able to piece that all together um, is not just having control over the website, but it's also being able to have access to the CRM and you know, you know, trigger emails based on certain behaviors. Message across social, paid search. And I think, I do think, like Alex said, it's in the works. I think the reason why it's taking so long is because of the way that the data is is available right now or is not available rather in or just the, the or just the fact that too many technologies are based on you know 1980s and 1990s um stuff and don't have the capability to really do things with modern modern technologies um yeah so and I, you know i'm not going to say that companies would be unwilling i'm just saying that i don't think they have the capabilities um 
I, I agree with that. I think that it's partly, there is some hesitation because it's so new, but I think there's, you know, we're talking, um, we're talking about how dealers aren't doing things correctly, but we can't even blame them. They don't have the tools that they need to be able to do automation the way that they should be able to do today in 2019, for sure. By the way, we have to give a quick shout out to Chris Leslie. He's, um, he's got some funny ones going in the comments, by the oh, way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I wish I, I can't. Can I see them? Oh, yeah, just pull up Facebook and... Uh, yeah, I'm a horrible sure, millennial. Make sure you mute it, though. You'll get some feedback. <laughs> okay, no problem. I don't, I don't, this is like one of my first times going live, believe it or not. <laughs> Yeah, so Chris is also saying that dealer socket through dealer fire um, yeah. have some of these abilities. And I know um, Vin Solutions had some through their Vin Lens product to yeah. be able to see website or see people that had touched the website and be able to then change some of the process plans around that. Or well, that's probably one of the one of the biggest hurdles and, and why maybe we are a few years behind is the fact that we've got so many systems, so many services and nothing really speaks to each other. I mean, it's hard to do. I mean, you can't have effective autom uh, automation if you've got, you know, four different products that you're using four different services and they don't speak to each other. Yeah. I mean, and even if you have dealer socket, it sounds like, and I don't know, I would love if, if Chris is still listening, but it sounds like you have to, you have to be on dealer fire website and mm -hmm. use dealer socket CRM in order for this to work. That's we're exactly really, what he's saying. Yeah. So really on, on the one hand, yes, we're using too many, but on the other hand, it's so difficult and time consuming to switch CRMs or website providers. There should be a way to just have a quick switch and be able to do it and cr with cross platforms. You know, outside of the car business, there's all these services like Zapier yeah. and, um, Webhooks. Um, yeah, and I can't remember the one that I actually use. Um, HubSpot. Um, uh, no, not HubSpot. HubSpot does do similar things, but I think he's talking about like the API connectors. Yeah, if this, then that. I have to, yeah. yeah, I use them for home automation things. But, um, <laughs> but there's all kinds of things out there where you can hook into, say, Salesforce CRM or a different CRM system and connect it up to MailChimp and and they even have their own integrations and, and those things that those kind of things just don't exist for our business. Right. I mean that I wouldn't be able to use the automation platform I was talking about previously if it didn't have a, the easiest API integration with pipe drive, because I need, I need everything to be reflected into our CRM. I don't want to have to do it manually. I don't, I, I don't know how people do it manually. I would literally have to export lists, upload them to our CRM, rematch them with the deals and then export anytime I wanted to do anything with it back into the email automation platform, um, which I guess is what people are doing today in automotive. But um, I don't even think they're going that far with it. Most of them. No. Not it's so, even close. So, so what, what do you, what are they doing? That's why we've coined the term email blast. <laughs> and it's all done through the CRM system. <laughs> or yeah. you do a data dump from the DMS and you yeah. pass that to the marketing. That's usually how it goes. It's just a data dump from the DMS. Yep. You know, unless you're going after contracts like, and then you're buying lists, which are not effective. fraction of the buying journey today. Like what about ads they saw? What about websites they went to? What about competitor websites they went to? What about things that they searched? What about how long they've been on your site? I mean, there's so much there that is missing if you're just taking information from the DMS, which is really just what sold or that's, that's what we do. Yeah. I mean, what other options are there? Definitely using some smart automation is, is, is a good option. <laughs> it's a very good option. So there's definitely things that uh, and, and companies that are doing decent work on automating the marketing end of things. Um, like I told you, there was a total control dominator that dealer.com had back in the, in the two thousands. Um, it's, it's been quite effective for a long time. Um, whether or not that technology is still modern is a different story, but, um, uh, but anyway, I, I digress on that point. Um, <laughs> yeah, just so, trying to bring this back around to marketing automation somehow. Um, someone here wrote about, um, sorry, now I'm really, you know, 
I'm loving this. I'm able to actually see comments, but maybe it was deleted. But I, it's, someone here wrote something about Drive Centric having the ability. Did you see that, Alex? Yeah, from uh, Lacey Donaldson. Yeah, I would be interested in hearing more about that because I'm sure that they're doing something right. <laughs> I have there, a feeling they're doing something right. There, there is a neat thing happening right now. Uh, I feel like it's a, um, you know, like a, this happens about every 20 years or so where uh, we have great innovation um, in the industry followed by years of uh, significant consolidation, which we, we just went through a lot of that. So now we're starting to see a lot of startups coming up and um, pushing the innovation edge again. So I think we'll see the, the 2020s will be a pretty exciting time, just like the uh, early 2000s were. Oh yeah, I think for sure there's gonna be way more automation in, in automotive come 2020s, 2020 and plus. Um, there's just, and it's, it's such an industry that's made for automation, meaning there's so much stuff that you, you're, you're doing manually that can be automated that's based on inventory and incentives and service offers and that, that it's so easy, it's like almost the easiest industry to automate. Um, so I think it's definitely gonna make a huge impact. Yeah, there's, um, there is a company that is um, doing some neat integrations with a few other startups um, and I won't get into who they are, uh, but look for them in Q4 and they're able to take a you know, inventory website, CRM and DMS data and pinpoint where customers are in their, in their um, lifetime with this vehicle. So whether they need service messaging or whether they need sales messaging or messaging around, hey, you're in equity, it's time to, to move on from this vehicle. Um, and then be able to target them in, in various uh, mediums, not just a very specific one like Facebook, but actually being able to do it in a paid search medium and, and hit them with display ads and almost as targeted as Facebook. So that isn't just building the list, but it's actually then doing all of the lead nurture? Yeah, and it's all, and it's yeah. all automated, so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, I think that's the right direction. I think that's where, I, I think that's, I'm excited to, to hear about that company because that's exactly what, what needs to be happening. Mm -hmm. um, and I think maybe, maybe we can hear from some people too live, but I would love to know if, what is the biggest holdback to bringing automation in-house for something like SCM? Like what, what would it be that would- Expertise. Sorry? Uh, comfort. So in the, in the dealership, um, the, the operators in the dealership typically aren't marketing people. The operators right. are looking at how to do pay plans, how to, do, um, how to incentivize the salespeople to get out and talk to customers and, and close deals at higher grosses. Um, it's less about how do I squeeze a penny out of my uh, pay-per-click spin or um, how can I, how can I do this over here? Maybe there's somebody that's been hired. Maybe you do have a Jeff Kirshner in your store and you're lucky uh, who has the expertise to be able to do that kind of thing, but take it a step further. Um, you know, and after our conversations yesterday talking about the show, I, I started to reflect on um, why I didn't personally do more of this when I was in the stores. And it really came down to a simple thing for me. I wasn't paid on it. Hmm. Uh, me moving that needle uh, from, um, you know, to get more leads certainly affected my pay and that kind of thing, but to maybe cut back on costs. Nope. I wasn't paid on that at all. Cutting hmm. costs was not in my pay plan. So I just never thought about it. It's so interesting because it's fi it financially makes so much sense. You can cut on so so much cost if you can run it in-house or just bring, bring in a platform. Um, that is unfortunate. You're right. I don't think any dealership is really incentivizing based on cutting on costs. But unless you're the GM and up. Right, right. Unless you're the GM and up. But if you are acquiring better traffic, it is by default that you are going to get better leads or more leads. So there's some kind of correlation, but obviously 
it's, it's hard. It's hard to, to focus on that if you're doing a million things um, and, and responsible for other leads. But I will say that acquiring good traffic will get you better leads, which is not revolutionary. I just think that there, there is something to that. And sometimes you don't have that visibility if you don't have control over what's happening with your marketing. Well, it's also um, the ability to show that this spend over here turned into these many, this many people walking into my store. You know, right. th those connections rarely exist. You know, they try to equate it down to a sale. I think that's the wrong way to look at it. Um, the marketing should just be putting people's feet in the building or on the lot. Um, yeah. And I don't know many people or even many softwares that are trying to track that. Yeah. I mean, I will say that we've developed something that helps give more visibility into that. Um, but it's never going to be a hundred percent. And, and actually I think when, when we sell it, when we first went to market with the product and we said, Oh, listen, we can actually connect on an offline events and tell you, you know, who clicked on an ad and then walked into your store without necessarily a self identifying online. Uh, we ran into a bit of, we learned from it, but we ran into a bit, a bit of trouble with dealerships because they were like, okay, I'm going to be able to see every single person who came into my store and what they have and what they did, which is, almost impossible to get hundred percent coverage, but even getting a little insight into it, 30, 40% insight into which ads are really driving, uh, driving traffic to your store is definitely something that I think dealerships should start having a handle on um, because that's part of regaining control of your marketing strategy. Not everyone's converting on leads, lead forms anymore. So you do need to know how your ads are, are affecting walk-ins and phone calls. Yeah, and then we can get back to using the great buzzword of attribution. Oh, uh, I thought we were done with that. <laughs> I thought we were on to I thought we were on to other things. <laughs> well, yeah, now it's AI. Yeah. Well, it was AI before attribution, then attribution distracted everyone for a little. Now we're back on to AI. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm -hmm. it is, yeah, it is frustrating that AI has become such a loose term and it is not necessarily connected to actual artificial intelligence. Yeah, well, you're the, you're the marketing director. You haven't uh, been tempted to play with the term. Um, that so we seems actually to be the out. only ones using the term. <laughs> we actually just no did offense. a- No offense. No, 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 it's okay. Um, we just did a complete revamp and took it out of a lot of what we were doing because I, I think it's become a very common word in automotive and it doesn't have actual connection to value. So I would, even though I believe that auto lead stars using real AI, I don't want to be tied to it because of the negative connotations in the industry right now, which is a very twisted way of thinking about it. <laughs> um, so we're trying to figure out how to actually, uh, show dealers what what real machine learning and what real artificial intelligence is without maybe necessarily using the word AI. We'll see. We'll test it out. I'd love feedback on what people think about using AI in, in uh, pitching to dealers and marketing to dealers. It's an interesting topic. You could have a whole nother refresh about that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it looks like Chris Leslie's trying to take us there now. Oh, nice. <laughs> OnStar. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah, so Jeff, oh. what's, your, what's your feeling on some of this? Uh, I know probably one of the biggest fears is uh, we were talking about why dealerships uh, maybe shouldn't bring it in-house or, or hesitant. What about the set it and forget it? You know, there's always that fear that when you have something like that, you can set it. And as we know, a lot of dealerships will do. They'll just forget about it. and. Uh, I mean, can you do that? Do, are we, are we, or will we ever be along the line of technology where we could set something up and it just runs itself and you basically can forget about it? I think set it and forget it. I, I don't know if this was directed at me or Alex, but I'll jump in. Doesn't matter. The, I do think that set it and forget it is never going to work when you have something that's heavy strategy, right? So you need to be able, and this again goes back to just a, a, a mindset switch, which is get control of your data and just hold, 
hold your 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 vendors or your platforms accountable, um, you want to be able to to look at your metrics. So set it and forget it. Maybe in the sense of okay, hopefully you won't have to do much manual work, but definitely you need to check in and look at metrics and make sure it's actually working. Because as much as I'd like to say automated systems are perfect, there could always be something that you can switch to make it better. Especially if you're if you're on top of you know the strategy behind it making sure that you're hitting your goals. So what would be the first step for a dealership that wants to bring some more items in house through for, for, you know, marketing automation, what would be the first step? What is there a, a channel of marketing that, you know, that would maybe be the easiest, you know, Hey, we can take this one. Uh, and if we take this one, we could get rid of this provider or at least cut back. Um, now we're going to have more ownership. We're going to have way more transparency because now we own the data. Uh, and, and again, it's going to save us some time, save us some money. What would be like the very first thing to look at? I would actually, I mean, this doesn't even have to do with autom automation necessarily, but I would make sure that you get a baseline on what's actually happening with your, whatever you're looking at now. So baseline on all website health metrics, baseline on SEM uh, metrics, baseline on conversion rate, because you're going to need that to then assess what, what you're going to be taking off and what you're going to be using for automation. Um, and that's also how you know who's going to be sharing the data and who's not, right? So you really need to get baseline metrics first, understand. And when I say baseline metrics, I mean, um, if you're going to switch to automation, you want to know how you were performing before, just, mm -hmm. just like, you know, Alex is, competition that he did with his his vendor to see if he can actually uh, outperform. I'm sure you had some kind of baseline metric that you were, you know, testing against. Um, baseline metrics first, and then after that, I would say uh, find what you're doing most manually or what your vendors are doing most manually and cut it out, automate it. How would they go about that? Just conversation? Yeah, either conversation or they can see. I mean, a lot of times what happens with vendors is that um, they're spending, I don't, maybe they're spending hours flipping out ads. Mm -hmm. There's no way you can't, you know, not spend four or five hours building the right ads that you need to reflect your inventory and your incentives and your website. So calculate that, see how, see if it's worth it. It's probably not. And invest in automating it. I would invest in automating it. I know if I was an agency, I'd be all over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I mean, every agency I've ever worked with, when it comes down to making our ads, our display ads, what are you know, graphic for the website uh, for specials and such, it's all manual labor. And you're saying that there's technology out there you can actually automate graphic design. Graphic design for sure. I mean, pull. Not so much design, but just maybe the overlay. Yeah, no, you can, you can pull images from anything from your website. Mm -hmm. um, I know that. But then you don't get your 20 plus percent fees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, maybe agencies should really be, be using automation too so that they can make that, make that money and not do any manual work. I mean, that's really the smart way to do it. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, there's there's definitely when it comes to digital ads, there's definitely easy ways to uh, to automate the the graphics. There's easy ways to automate the context. It's it's been done for years. Uh, it's nothing new. Yeah, um, and if it's not working for you. Create a new template, automate it through a new template, test it. Meaning that's not, that's why it won't necessarily be set it and forget it forever because you're going to want to test different templates, but you know, let them run and just assess. Yeah. I, don't know, I, I, I see that's why dealerships outsource because and point being that definitely you want to have the transparency and be able to own your accounts. Uh, but I just, I don't know. I just don't see too many dealerships having the ability to just bring all that in house, no matter how, automated the process is or, or how effective it is from, from an automated standpoint. I don't know. I just bring in all I, that in house. I agree. I think there, I think it needs to be with 
someone who's dedicated to marketing strategy that you bring in house and it will still, even with salary and bonus and training and whatever else, and the flat fee will, it will still be financially better for the dealership to do that than, than outsource and, and certainly not have access to your own data. So there's an advantage there, but I do. Well, I think that's the biggest point is making sure that you have transparency into the data. Yeah. Uh, you know, you at least own it that way. If you, and of course this just really relates to certain, certain aspects. There's some things that you're just not going to be able to own that data. Uh, you know, there's no way there's no provider out there. There's no service out there. that's going to let you do certain things. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm thinking like the auto, I mean, or something like that. I mean, you don't, does a dealership own that data whenever they sign up? Is that data necessary to own? I mean, you're, they're using whatever they're using in order to get the, the, the data to say, hey, these are the vehicles you need to buy, this is where they need to be priced at, all that good stuff. I, it's not really ideal where a dealership could bring a product like that in-house. You're not gonna be able to build it, that's for sure. Yeah, no, that, I mean, that, to me is somewhat even automated for the dealer, right? They get automated lists and mm -hmm. um, information and there's not, they don't have to do, they rely on a, on a platform, on a software to give them the information that they need um, and probably assess if it's accurate, which is I think a little different than what's happening with more of like the website and SEM and digital marketing side. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely excited to see what the future brings. Uh... Alex, you, you're not mentioning any company names, but, uh, you know, I, hopefully I next year or two, it, it would be great to be able to offer the customer a more personalized experience based on, you know, different sets of criteria. Uh, the other, the other hole there though is you could potentially be effective at increasing your, uh, conversion on the website to a lead. Uh, but there's still that hole there with the walk-in customer. Uh, are they, is that, is that prospect affected just the same, whether or not they fill out an online lead form or they walk into the dealership or they pick up the phone? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. So. I don't know either, but what I do know is that every interaction with them should take into account the fact that they did or didn't fill out a form the fact that they did or didn't walk into the dealership. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's missing. Agreed. Agreed. So yeah, some exciting times coming up. We'll see. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. So ever we should uh we should end this today. Yeah, it's ending. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, I'm just sitting here, my wheels are turning, just thinking about different areas that a dealership could start off with automation. And uh I don't know. I don't have to write an article about it. Yeah. Well, definitely the, the moral of the story is um, you've got to have a baseline to Alana's point. And uh, if that requires simply that spreadsheet we were talking about at the beginning of the show, or maybe I was talking about at the beginning of the show, I won't put we on you guys for that one. If you think it's a bad idea, but um, <laughs> no, it's really not. just sitting there and documenting what you already have what it does and then what your main goal with that thing is. Yeah, so. no, a lot of dealerships don't do that. So it makes sense. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I definitely, uh, we appreciate you jumping on board with us today. It was a pleasure. It was great. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Do, do it again. <laughs> yeah, we will. We'll do it again. We'll do something different. A lot of stuff came up in this. I'm sure we can figure out a topic just from just from the sidetracks of this conversation. By the way, what what time is it in Israel at 1 p.m. Eastern? It's 8 p.m. there. It's there are seven hours ahead. Okay, of, so you'll you'll be able to do it from from your future. Israel. Yeah, no problem. I don't have a life at all. I can totally do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no worries. Awesome. Well, thank you again for having me. You got it. All right. Uh, next Friday, Alex, I'm on vacation. Yeah. And you're going to have, uh, I think, Ryan Leslie is going to be joining us. Yeah. I guess what we're going to talk about. Yeah. Automation. AI. Oh, AI. <laughs> I'll tune in. Maybe we should get Chris Leslie on, too. We can have the well, battle I'll of the join. Leslie. Yeah. Yeah. 
Hmm. All right, guys. I'll see everybody next Friday. Awesome. See Thanks. Happy Friday. Take care. Bye.